Hello everyone and welcome to Making a Really Big Rocket Day in Kerbal Space Program in Realism Overhaul. During my February 28th Twitch livestream while we were waiting for the SpaceX SES-9 launch which would be scrubbed that day but would eventually be launched just fine, a viewer named Sarfresh challenged me to make a sea dragon. Now I didn't think I could do a sea dragon in particular but a large lifter that could launch 550 tons to low earth orbit, I decided that was possible. And looking at the Sea Dragon specs, it looked like it had an Apollo capsule on top with a service module, so I started off with that, which is what you see here. So, 550 tons to low Earth orbit, I needed to make the payload first, which I figured would just be interplanetary stages, just for the heck of it. And that's about the size of what the Sea Dragon has. It's a pretty ridiculous looking rocket when you actually look at schematics of it. But I decided to be a little bit more restrained. As you can see there, I start off with five Vinci engines. But I ultimately decide that I would need storable fuel, well, slightly more storable fuels, and I'll change that. I also uh, decided to see what a uh, few Nervas would look like on the next stage. That didn't look quite right. To be fair, no particular engines look right on stages as huge as these. But anyway, I decided to instead go with Raptor vacuum engines because they have better storability, methane and oxygen, rather than hydrogen and oxygen. I had added the configuration to M1 engines from the SSTU pack, but the M1 engines from the SSTU pack were actually resized RL10s, and clearly these have not been sized properly. So they should be much larger than they seem to be here. But anyway, uh, after tweaking a little bit, uh, I decided to go with one Raptor vacuum on top, and here I've got four of the Raptor vacuums here, but I wanted to size it so that it's a 550 ton payload. So I ultimately only went with two Raptor vacuums there. Uh, this is all part of the payload, so it's irrelevant really. We're not going to be using these stages at all. Uh, it's interesting though that we seem to have enough Delta V to go to Jupiter with this uh, if we launch that 550 tons to orbit. This is the first proper stage of the launcher itself, and I went with eight J2Xs. So basically this was like the second stage of the Nova rocket, which is a Saturn C8 or at least one configuration of a Saturn C8. That would have been a direct ascent to the moon or a potential Mars launcher if you wanted to launch a Mars mission all at once. Now for the next stage we didn't really have the engines that were proposed for Sea Dragon. Uh, we have real engines here and so I decided to use 16 Space Shuttle main engines in clusters of four. So the good thing about the SSTU pack is that you can have multiple engines as one part. And so here we only have four parts, even though it's 16 engines. I decided to paint the stage what we have jokingly called on live streams cryogenic black, because of course RO doesn't model boil off based on the paint you use on the tanks, so you don't have to paint them white or anything like that. Uh, yeah, so um, I can get away with painting them black just fine, and so I do. Uh, not realistic, but uh, one little touch of anti-realism in the mix there. Not that this is a particularly realistic rocket. Not these days, anyway. Uh, once upon a time, I guess, they would have thought that this was uh, a solid proposal. But anyway, the base stage is 18 F1As. And the beautiful thing about this is, with the SS2 pack with realism overhaul, this is just one part. And so we're going to have minimal lag on this stage. If we had to have 18 separate engines, the lag would have been horrendous. But it's just one part and 18 F1As. And that gives us a rocket. The total mass ultimately will be just a little bit over 12,000 tons. And you can see there, uh, pretty neatly gets us into orbit on the, thir uh, on the three stages. Actually, it's a little bit extra. A bit of rearranging the stages gets us to that 12,000 ton number. Right about there. There you go, 12,001 tons. So here we are on the launch pad. And ignition. And explosion. You'll notice an effect at the top of the rocket. For reasons unknown to me, the service module engine decided to ignite. It wasn't staged that way. But uh, it just decided to start all on its own some sort of bug, so I had to shut that off. That was contributing to our wobbles. And so I decided to have Smart ASS keep us straight, and that worked just fine. Uh, possibly we also got knocked by a launch clamp at the start. 
for those that say that you need launch clamps high on the rocket for a large rocket like this, actually no. All the launch clamps were very low on the rocket. Uh, but anyway, here we go with our unconventional colors. Launching out of India, by the way, because I was testing a PSLV and GSLV rocket earlier in the stream. And so we are obviously in 64-bit and we have all sorts of visual effects, so that's nice. So a nice dawn on the horizon there. The F-1As are doing remarkably well. 18 of them again. Launching a 12,000 ton rocket. And we are almost done with half of our mass. There we go, 6,000 tons now. And about to stage here. Set. And ignition of the 16 RS-25s. RS-25Ds, by the way. It's hard to say how much something like this would cost, but you'd figure with the engines being used, you're talking about four and a half Saturn V's and maybe five space shuttles. Um, maybe a little bit more than five, five and a third space shuttles, just based on the engines, I mean. And when you think about it that way, well, we did launch uh, four and a half Saturn V's and five space shuttles. So in theory, we have the money for this. Uh, if you work it all out, it's probably something like uh, 40 to 60 billion dollars. Don't know how much the launch pad configuration would cost. As we're getting ready for the second stage out, all those space shuttle main engines. Stage and ignition. Obviously, we don't have to go into the fact that this is not the most efficient way of doing things. But 40 to 60 billion dollars, well, you know, the Navy builds ships for that sort of money and Apple's got 200 billion dollars sitting doing absolutely nothing. So yeah, it's conceivable, right? I mean, in theory, it's conceivable. So you know, maybe Apple or Google could build one of these with their spare cash and launch a, launch a mission to Mars direct without any of the complicated business. That's our trajectory, again launching out of India. I was crossing some land over there. Probably should have gone a little bit more southeast to uh, hit that gap between things, but probably safe right now going on the eight J two X's. Jeb Bill and Bob as traditional. Actually the the simulation rate wasn't too bad. It was about two seconds to one second so two real time seconds to one second simulation time as we stage. It's five hundred and sixty five tons to lower floor orbit. I could have burned more in the third stage to get us fully into orbit, but I decided to leave that suborbital technically. Um, so we definitely got over 550 tons to low Earth orbit on a 12,000 ton rocket. I just wanted to check out where these engines actually worked and so I ran them for a little bit to make sure that at least they did what they were supposed to do. But anyway, there we go. We are in orbit and that was my escapade in launching the largest rocket I have ever built in Kerbal Space Program uh, by, by mass, not by parts, not by parts. Anyway, so uh, that does it for me on this video. Just a little special to showcase this event. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.